Welcome. Welcome to Good News from St. Andrew's Guelph. I'm your host, the Reverend John Borthwick, and it is my pleasure to be with you again this week for Good News from St. Andrew's Guelph. This week, we're continuing our series in marking Indigenous History Month, and I, and I want to share a couple of things in the realm of creativity. But before I do, I just want to, again, reach out to you as a community. So happy to hear from you. It's great. Uh, to know that you are watching this uh, show that we put on each and every week with Rogers TV 20. Uh, it's great to connect with you as well uh, through YouTube and the other uh, methods that we do. I uh, want to send a little shout out to, to Pat and to Rita and to Doreen and, uh, and many, many others who watch us every week. Uh, let me know if you're watching. Uh, send me a little note if you like or give us a call. We'd love to connect with you as uh, we continue this journey through this uh, this time of COVID. Hope that you're getting your vaccinations. Hope that you're getting double-dosed. I'm hearing some great stories of people getting double-dosed, and we look forward uh, to the future in the fall and winter of this year, and that things may change. But one thing that won't change is good news from St. Andrew's Guelph. We'll be continuing to produce these episodes for Rogers TV 20 for as long as they'll let us stay on the air. So today... As we uh, begin this episode, I wanted to talk about um, a little something related to the creativity and, and the way we use creativity to express things when uh, it could be joy and celebration. It could be uh, things that uh, we just don't have the words for or we try to find other words to express how we're feeling. And especially when we're hurting, processing pain or sorrow, using creativity can be a helpful release and throughout the story of God, the Bible, there are so many examples, especially in the book of poetry in the Bible called the Psalms uh, and other books of poetry in the Bible like Song of Songs, where people express how they're feeling, rawly, vulnerably, transparently, out to the divine and to the universe and just want to capture that in some way. This week a friend passed a poem along to me after the announcement of the finding of 215 Indigenous children's bodies buried at the Kamloops Residential School. And uh, the words were from a poet, a poet named Jim Taylor. And, and what Jim had done is, is transformed a poem that, for some, is quite familiar, and certainly here at St. Andrews in Guelph, is very familiar. And this is where the inspiration came from, Jim says. A line kept pounding in my head, he said, after hearing this grievous announcement. We are the dead. We are the dead, and it seemed to demand an explanation and an expansion. And then he realized where he had heard that line in Flanders Fields, the poem written by John McRae during the First World War. And he found that by substitu substituting a few details, his poem still resonated. And so with apologies to Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, he says, here's the revised version. And, what, and before I share the poem, what I find interesting is that often when we've come quite accustomed to something, a turn of phrase, a poem, a song, the words are familiar, we often listen more when some of those things get changed and it will impact us far more profoundly. So as the family church of Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, let us hear these words recast for the days that we are living by Jim Taylor. In empty fields, the grasses grow we have no crosses, row on row. Not marks the spaces where we lie, our witness silenced. We must die to shield the secret of our schools. We are the dead. Our lives were brief, born, loved, abducted, endless grief. Sacrifice to seal the lie of residential schools. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though grasses grow round residential schools. Residential schools are not an easy topic to talk about, especially with our children or our grandchildren. So I wanted to share a few books um, that some great folks have shared with me from, from the One World School 
House Foundation. And uh, these are some pretty amazing books and helpful and, and can be uh, a great way of opening up maybe conversation with our children or grandchildren in an age-appropriate kind of way about the residential school program and, and certainly also just about the Indigenous community in our country today. So I'd like to share a few of these books with you uh, this, this, for this episode. The first one comes, When We Were Alone. And it's by David Robertson and illustrated beautifully by Julie Flett. A great way of beginning that conversation around residential schools. Another one, and there's actually two in this series, When I Was Eight and the sequel, Not My Girl. These are, are written by Christy Jordan Fenton and Margaret Potak Fenton and the arts by Gabriel Grimard. In the first book, When I Was Eight, it speaks of a young girl's experience at residential schools. And in the second one, it speaks of the experience of a young girl who was in a residential school and then came back to her indigenous community and the experience that she found there and can be a helpful conversation of how that also created some difficulties within that community and within families. A little, another book, I Am Not a Number. And this one is written by Jenny K. Dupuy and Kathy Kaser, and it's illustrated by Jillian Newland. Another one called Stolen Words. This one's written by Melanie Florence and illustrated again by Gabrielle Grimard. Uh, Stolen Words uh, tells the powerful story of um, this sort of intergenerational experience where a little girl is, understands that her grandfather may have spoken a different language and, and, and tries to sort of connect with him and, and wonders, as a child would, why, why I don't hear that language as much. And, and, and a story sort of emerges from that, and a beautiful way for the two generations to speak to one another. And, and as I'm showing these, certainly if you want to press pause on, your, on whatever device you're watching this on and uh, check out these, uh, I'll also include them in the description for the YouTube audience. Uh, they'll be in the description if you want to look at getting some of these from a local book uh, bookseller. Wouldn't be Guelph if we didn't at least uh, mention Robert Munch and his collaboration uh, with Michael Arverluk Kusagark. Um, this is uh, more about the Inui experience. A promise is a promise. And just a story that was told uh, quite, a, quite a ways ago uh, in collaboration with Robert Munch. And uh, another Guelph uh, shout out, Coyote Tales uh, by Thomas King. Probably a little older, but, but could be shared with a younger audience as well. And finally, a book that I found really quite meaningful. Um, it's written as a kind of like a youth reader, a young adult age reader, Speaking Our Truth, A Journey of Reconciliation by Monique Gray Smith. Um, this book should be read by anyone of any age. So accessible, um, graphically told pictures, um, easy to share, but also amazingly uh, sharing and including so many of the stories of the indigenous community. Um, as, as, as they speak, uh, and again, generationally, some older elders who share their stories and, and talk about what reconciliation and healing might look like, and the younger generation as well, speaking into uh, the context that we find ourselves in Canada. I'd highly, highly recommend that book as a part of your engagement. Uh, maybe read it together with a teenager, and if you're an older adult, uh, the two of you commit to reading it and sort of sharing and, uh, and, and really sort of digging into uh, some of the things that the, the, uh, within the chapters. There's also a number of times in the book where um, the author will sort of try to engage you personally, ask you to, to think about things and, you know, how does this impact you and, and thinking about that a little more deeply, going a little more deeply in our conversation around how do we, how do we reconcile um, within our country the experience, the treatment, the trauma um, of the Indigenous community at the hands of certainly the government of Canada and 
a collaboration with many churches in Canada, including the Presbyterian Church in Canada. So I encourage you to connect with different ways of engaging in these conversations among your family. Take care of yourself as you do so. This is difficult and powerful stuff. Um, be mindful of how difficult and powerful this might be for you as a reader if you're a non-Indigenous. Uh, but, but also be mindful of how these are the stories of Indigenous peoples. And these aren't just stories, these are the realities that they experienced and how profoundly powerful and moving and traumatic and difficult uh, and continuing to be challenging um, that is to this day. I believe strongly that we need to continue to do the work to bring justice and healing and reconciliation uh, in our world, in our local communities, in our country, and certainly in our relations with the indigenous community. And I'm committed here at St. Andrews in Guelph to continuing that work, continuing to try and, and engage in ways that are going to be helpful uh, in, in seeking partnerships where we can uh, and being a place that can be perhaps trusted as we do the work, to be trusted to do this work of justice together with the indigenous community. This week, um, we have the service uh, that's coming up uh, from Sunday, June 13th. It's the story about Jesus falling asleep on a boat during a storm. And, and sometimes it feels like when we go through our own storms, we wonder, is Jesus sleeping? Is God not awake? And it's a reading from Go the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 35 to 41. Next week, I'm going to talk a little more about uh, the Presbyterian Church in Canada specifically and its role and uh, in the residential school program, uh, clear up a few things related to um, our participation in that and uh, give us, give you some uh, information regarding that. And we also have a very special guest that's going to be with us, Stephen Jackson from uh, the CEO from Anishinaabeg Outreach in this region, uh, a center for Indigenous healing. He's going to be here for one of our Zoom reviews. So do, do plan to tune, tune in for next week. So, may your day be filled with more good news than bad.